And unfortunately, all those factors continue to rise in the developed world. Mm -hmm. so heart failure is an epidemic unto itself driven by those factors and there's no end in sight. Okay, hi everybody. Well, welcome back. Cardial is a stock that we've been following for a long time now. We actually first introduced them to you. The share price was roughly $2.50. A lot has happened since then, which we're gonna get into, but as of today, September 15th, the stock price is closer to $5. So needless to say, a lot of happy shareholders. We're very lucky to have David Elsley, the CEO of Cardial with us to bring us up to speed on the story. David, thank you so much for taking some of your time with us. Well, thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having us back. It's great to be here today. And uh, first things first, for interested investors at home, uh, if you are a Canadian, the stock trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker CRDL.TO. Um, and more recently in the US on the NASDAQ, congratulations, with the ticker CRDL. So David, uh, let's just jump right into it. So for anybody watching this that perhaps is not fully up to speed on the story, could you give us just a quick little elevator pitch summary on, on what it is you guys do? Sure. At, at Cardio, we're developing treatments for inflammation uh, in heart disease. Heart disease remains a leading cause of death and disability in the world today. And uh, Cardio is developing new innovative strategies to address one of the major problems in heart disease, which is chronic inflammation. So that's, that's the primary focus and sole focus of Cardio Therapeutics. And very recently, as I, I touched base on uh, a moment ago, you guys listed on the NASDAQ. So I just wanted to start um, there for anyone who maybe doesn't understand the significance. Can we l touch a little bit on what is the significance on listing on the NASDAQ and how could it impact shareholders? I believe uh, the uplisting on NASDAQ is very significant. It is the largest global exchange for life sciences companies and biotechnology companies developing new important medicines for many causes of uh, disease. And uh, this provides a gateway, it provides a, a platform uh, for this company to communicate to the largest life sciences investment community in the world, which is the United States. And why that is, is the US is and remains the largest medical market in the world uh, for new innovative tr treatments. Certainly. And I think it just shows it's apparent in the, you know, even the share price movement, volume conversations, uh, you can tell that it's now available to a much wider audience. So uh, I think another reason why there's been a lot of traction, of course, is I think investors are certainly starting to realize um, the significance of some of your clinical trials. So why don't we just jump into that? As I understand, there's three active right now. Uh, the first of which is uh, for COVID patients with risk factors associated with heart disease. Uh, the second of which is treating myocarditis, which among other things is a rare but potential side effect of taking the COVID vaccine. Uh, and third of which is heart failure, which actually is the leading cause of death and hospitalization um, in North America. So could you give us just a quick overview on each uh, with a few highlights that you'd like shareholders to know? Sure. Our largest uh, clinical effort is in high-risk cardiac patients who uh, become uh, infected with a COVID virus. And why uh, that's important for patients with heart disease is these patients have a markedly elevated risk for mortality if they become COVID positive, uh, orders of magnitude larger than a typical healthy population, for example. Uh, so for example, Inside of 25 days, 50% mortality uh, to the extent that they get the alpha variant. And now the delta variant is even a stronger virulent strain, more contagious, more deadly uh, in that condition. Our second major effort you mentioned is in myocarditis, which is also inflammation of the heart or heart muscle. Uh, but is, it is a particularly devastating form of heart disease because it attacks young people, young healthy people. It is the leading cause of sudden cardiac death in people under the age of 30. And that would include 20-year-olds, uh, teenagers, et cetera. And as you mentioned, uh, a rare complication of certain of the vaccine strategies for COVID, the mRNA vaccines, uh, is myocarditis, which is this uh, deadly form of heart inflammation. And now we're even seeing myocarditis being described as a complication of COVID. Mm. So prevalence and incidence of myocarditis is rising around the world. And we're very pleased that the FDA has just recently 
uh, granted clearance for us to initiate an important program in myocarditis, which has no currently available treatment. That's what makes uh, the urgency all the more important. And then the last program you mentioned is in heart failure. We plan to move a new innovative strategy for inflammation into heart failure, which is arguably the second largest medical market in the world, uh, probably next only to diabetes in terms of its size and scope. It affects 26 million people in the developed world and remains a leading cause of death and hospitalization globally. And for those at home that, at, myself included actually, that aren't as familiar with the clinical trial process, um, we've mentioned phase two as well as phase two slash three. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about what that actually means and, and where that sits in the, the overall timeline for a trial? Yeah, the typical drug development cycle uh, starts with phase one, just say phase two, which is safety and efficacy or how well the product works. And then phase three is typically uh, confirmation of the product's effectiveness and a broader demonstration of safety of the product in a much larger population. Uh, so phase three trials can involve, I mean, a typical phase one trial would be 20 to 50 patients. A phase two trial might be 50 to 200 patients. And phase three trials can be 400 patients or larger, uh, can involve thousands of patients in certain uh, clinical indications. But phase three is typically the, um, the last developmental or the most important developmental step uh, to gaining approval and broad acceptance of a new medicine. And so we're in a phase two, three trial, which is really answering both questions theoretically. And then we have this new important phase two program, uh, which is a key milestone in developing the new medicine for myocarditis. Mm -hmm. And then look forward to taking our heart failure medicine into the clinical development cycle uh, later this year, early next year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in terms of these trials, I know we were discussing um, the orphan drug program, something I'm not overly familiar with. Can we discuss that? I understand there's certain benefits to um, being active in that. That um, Could you maybe discuss um, some of the incentives, um, things that shareholders could look to as to why that's important? Uh, the orphan drug program, which is um, basically supported by the Food and Drug Administration in the United States and regulators in different regions of the world in Europe. It's basically a program to incentivize the pharmaceutical industry to develop new important medicines for rare diseases, diseases that affect in the United States, for example, less than 200,000 people. But that doesn't make these diseases unimportant. These diseases are, are very devastating to those affected. Most of them cause mortality or lifelong complications. So in the case of myocarditis, that would be an orphan drug eligible indication <clears throat> because it affects less than 200,000. Thankfully, it affects less than 200,000 young, healthy adults each and every year. But that disease can uh, lead to fulminant heart failure in a young, healthy person. Uh, it can cause lengthy ICU stays. It can necessitate the requirement for a heart transplant in advanced cases and can lead to uh, early mortality. So it is a, a devastating disease very costly to care for, very impactful on human life. And it's, um, it's, it's very important that uh, the Food and Drug Administration realize this and develop these programs to allow new innovative therapies to be developed. Uh, in fact, a company called Myocardia, uh, which was traded on the NASDAQ, um, you know, up until the end of last year when it was acquired for $13 billion by Bristol Myers, they developed initially a new drug for a rare cardiac orphan and they built 13 billion dollars in value over three and a half years in that regard so that underscores the potential for new drug entrants into orphan drug categories and um, you know that's not why we do it though the reason we do it is to be impactful on people's lives and their quality of life certainly and perhaps something that's maybe not discussed uh, enough in the investor community is the quality of the team. So um, specifically, you've got you know world-class talent, um, part of your management team, board of directors, international uh, clinical steering committee. Um, of course, there's a lot of people involved, but is there perhaps maybe a, a few individuals you'd like to highlight that uh, uh, in front of shareholders that they should uh, be aware of? Really wouldn't want to single anyone out because uh, this team is extraordinary, each and every one. I could talk for uh, several minutes about each one of these uh, extraordinary individuals and their experience. 
I think in general, I would say that the cardiac management team has over 30 years, three decades of experience in developing new and important innovative heart failure medicines. Our scientific advisory panel has spent their entire lives uh, becoming experts and key opinion leaders in areas cardiology, myocarditis, and other major complications of the heart. And our board of directors uh, are, you know, veterans of the pharmaceutical industry, commercialization experts, uh, developers of new important medicines, and our recently appointed chair is a cardiologist and a heart failure specialist. So, um, you know, very proud of the entire team. I'd welcome, you know, all of your viewers to visit cardiolorex.com and read the extraordinary biographies um, and history and experience that uh, these individuals bring to bear, because that's important. You can have the best medicine in the world, but if you don't have the right team to develop it, it can still stumble and falter and be delayed. Uh, so we spent a decade building this team uh, that we have worked with for uh, 30 years, but uh, this team has come together over the past several years, and I'm thrilled to be part of it and uh, the development efforts that we're, uh, we're pursuing here in heart disease. Amazing. And we'll make sure that for anybody watching the video, we'll, we'll link the, the investor presentation so people can get very familiarized with the team. Um, for those of you at home, it is definitely well worth your while to take a look at this. So to close out, I mean, you've had a big year. There's lots happening. Some really critical milestones have been met. Um, what can you give to our audience in terms of what to look for in the, in the end of the year and moving into 2022? I think the primary areas of focus continue to be <clears throat> inflammation and heart disease. And in that regard, uh, we look forward to completing the landmark Lancer trial, uh, which is a study in over 400 patients who are at high risk for mortality or major cardiovascular complications. We look forward to completing that study and reporting that trial. Uh, we look forward to initiating the acute myocarditis program in this rare but devastating form of heart disease that attacks young people and causes sudden cardiac death in that otherwise healthy population. And we're really, really excited about this new innovation we're coming forward with, which is a new formulation of the anti-inflammatory agent we're developing here for heart failure, mm. which, um, you know, is words can't describe the impact on human health of that disease. It's driven by three forces in the world today, which is diabetes, obesity, and high blood pressure. And unfortunately, all those factors continue to rise in the developed world. Mm -hmm. so heart failure is an epidemic unto itself driven by those factors, and there's no end in sight. Mm -hmm. Well, in summary, for anyone watching at home, if you haven't already, this is certainly a stock at the very least you need to have on your watch list. Uh, we've been following very actively for a while now. Um, and it's, it's a very exciting company. So David, thank you so much. I know how busy you are, but really appreciate you taking the time to discuss with us. And it's great. We can't wait to share this, uh, with the rest of our audience. So thanks again. Thanks for having us back, Kevin. It's great to be here. Always a pleasure.